of weeks ago I shared how to create these um, chalkboard look embellishments and making your own and I'll have a link to that in the description uh, for this video but I have several of these that I want to include on a layout and this is kind of generally how I want to arrange them on my page. What I'd like to do though first is create some sort of interesting background for this. I've just got uh, plain red cardstock and I thought that I would use some masks and some paints to do a tone on tone effect uh, with the cardstock. So I'm just going to lay all of these things over to the side and I took a photograph of this be with them arranged the way they were before I started so I'll remember how I had them when I go to put everything back. Now my red cardstock has some texture to it and my plan is to use some different masks. I have these from uh, Studio Calico and this idea of covering a mask with duct tape, I think that came from a Christy Tomlinson video, I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, it keeps, when you're misting, it keeps the uh, uh, mist from going off to the side and getting on other projects. So um, it's just a way to protect your uh, surface. And then I have this one that I have used and used, it's probably my most used uh, mask, also from Studio Calico. So I'm going to do a combination of these two on my paper. I will probably cut the paper down some so I'm not using the full background, but I'm going to go ahead and put paint on most of this background and then I can decide what I want to cover. So I'm thinking of doing one this way and maybe one that way and then these two, something like that. So I have a variety of different paints. I've been doing some mixed media and buying some of, I, I had a lot of craft paints, but I've been buying some um, uh, transparent paints. This is as the name implies, heavy body, which is a little bit thicker paint when you when you put it on, even though it still comes out transparent. And I my, did my little sample here. I was really pleased with this, even though it's almost the same color red. Well, this is a little bit lighter red. Um, it's still going to show up, so I like that. My photo that I'm working with, my stepdaughter has on more uh, hot pink and red and a lot in that. Uh, color family. So I have some violet color. It came out pretty dark and I mixed it with some of the lighter pink and that brought it to a little bit lighter color. And then I also have this paint, um, craft paint, and this is glossy. I haven't used any glossy craft paint. It still should be pretty opaque. Um, I'm not going to see the background through this. However, um, I'm interested in seeing how glossy it really comes out to be. And one other thing I wanted to try for a tone on tone effect was to use some gesso. I have uh, white acrylic gesso from um, the Artist Loft brand. I think this came from Michaels. And I'm thinking of mixing that with some ink. And that's one thing I haven't tried yet. So I'm going to set this stuff aside and do a little sample of the gesso mixed with some of my ink refills. I'm just going to get out uh, quite a bit of gesso here. And I'm going to try two different colors with it. My ink refills are from Stamping Up. I have both a classic refill in Melon Mambo and a craft refill in Rose Red. The classic is a thinner ink, uh, so it's going to dilute the gesso a little bit more. And the craft ink is a little bit thicker. It's just the colors that I happen to have that I wanted to work with. So it doesn't really matter which ones you use. If you use paint, it's not going to dilute as much in terms of the thickness, but it is going to be a much lighter color once you add the gesso in. Now, I'm trying to match the clothes here, and the rose red one is, is pretty purplish. So I'm giving them both a try on my scrap paper, but it looks like the one in Melon Mambo is going to be a better uh, match for me. It just needs to be a tad darker. So I've got that ready to go. <clears throat> I'm going to start with some of this Liquitex heavy body paint. And I really love how this stuff works. It's not cheap. It's, it's an investment in these paints. Uh, so you can use craft paint or whatever you want to use. And one of the things I figured out after a while is if I turned my brush, my sponge, to the side and kind of worked with the pattern of the template, I wouldn't use up as much paint. So <laughs> I got smarter as I went along. I'm also using some paint there from um, Hobby that I bought at Hobby Lobby. I'll put the name up on the screen for you. 
it's a thinner paint because it's a transparent paint, but it came out really nicely on the stencil. I was really pleased with it and I liked the color. I'm going to have to let that bottom dry before I can use the stencil up on the top. So in the meantime, I'll work with the little circle one. And I'm starting there with some of that gesso in the Melon Mambo. Adding that around, and as I get to the top, I just put it in spots because I'm going to add a lighter color up on the top. Uh, this is some basics paint from, also I bought it at Hobby Lobby. And it's not my favorite paint. It's a more opaque paint. It, to me, there's not that much difference between it and craft paint, other than it's more expensive. So um, I haven't bought any more of it, but I did have it in this light pink color. And it, it came out almost white on the cardstock, which is probably good, because I have a picture of my uh, husband's grandson there, and he probably didn't, wouldn't want to be on a pink page. So, And down on the bottom, I'm going to do some more circles. And this time, I'm going to try my craft paint in the glossy. I hadn't really tried that before. It doesn't come out too glossy, glossier than regular uh, craft paint, cause, which is very, very flat. Um, but it's really a lot like the gesso in the ink is really what it ends up kind of being like, which is not super glossy either. I'm just playing with this, adding a lot of different colors. I did kind of bump my stencil there. It would be better, I guess, if I taped my stencils down. But I'm going for a very casual look here, so I wasn't too concerned about it. Okay, and I need to add, after it dries, I need to add that one stencil over on the left. But I thought I would put a little bit more of the circles down at the bottom and kind of spread the design out some. So I'm just adding a little bit more color down here on the lower part of the design in the circles. And these paints I'm globbing on a bit so they add, it adds some texture. Now when I do this stencil up in the upper left corner, I want it to overlap the lower stencil so I don't end up with a gap in my paper uh, that's not covered. And again, going in with that heavy body red paint from Liquitex. And if it's too heavy, of course, you can mix it with other mediums to thin it down a little bit. I love mixing paints, playing with colors, and just seeing what I get. So these kind of things are, are really a lot of fun for me. So I'm starting up at the top with the more magenta color, violet I think it was called, and then kind of in the middle blending the two together for this chevron stencil. And again, I thought I would add some overlap the stencils a little bit, so I'm putting the chevron on top of the dots this time. A nice thing about paints is that you can do layers and layers and layers and you don't really lose what's underneath and you can add light colors over top of dark colors whereas you can't really do that with mists and all and get anything to, to show up. And the paint's going to warp the paper a little bit but not nearly as much as mist would. And I thought I would need to add a little bit more there on the left so I would continue the chevron design. It took me a while to figure out exactly which direction I wanted it to go and where I wanted it to place to kind of remember that um, where the color was and where the where it wasn't when I was lining things up. This makes more sense when you're actually doing it. And something I figured out too is that uh, well, I smeared some paint there, is that my brush actually could make that kind of same chevron design if I just went up in diagonal marks. So I did a little bit of that to fill things out. Before I finish this up, I'm going to add some mist over the whole thing, just droplets of red mist to kind of pull it all together. And that showed up nicely on top of the paints, especially the, the lighter color paints. Now I'm going to trim this down. Uh, an inch off each side there, so I'll end up with 11 inches in a finished size. And I think that's going to look good with my photo and my black and white embellishments. So it's trimmed down at this point. And I'm going to rough up the edges a little bit just with my finger, just curling them. And they're going to tear in places, and that's okay because I want a casual kind of look. It's a nice thing about cardstock is you can tear it and you, you, you'll see that, that solid core through there instead of having um, white paper or some odd color or pattern on the back side. 
Okay, I'm just kind of laying this out, and when I put my embellishments over the top, I'm trying to cover up some of the pictures. This was taken in front of the garage, and although it's very neat in their garage, uh, I don't really necessarily want to show those boxes, so I'm going to use some of the embellishments to cover that up. I'm trying to figure out the order there, and I do, as I said earlier, I do have a picture of this, so I can go back and see what I'd originally planned to do with the arrangement. But just getting an idea of the arrangement and layout so that I can pick a background because it's now 11 inches so I need to put it on some kind of background. Uh, the white looks a lot better than I thought. I'm trying a basic gray patterned background and it's just a little bit too peachy for the other colors that I have. It's a nice paper but it just doesn't work color wise. I have a light gray. That looks pretty good. And I really liked the dark gray too. So what I end up doing is using the light gray, kind of compromise between the white and the dark gray. And I've added the number 12, which is my uh, grandson's age there, to the, the one of the embellishments, and I used some thickers for that. A few of these embellishments needed a little more stuff to them because they were kind of left plain. And that one circle one still needs something. I haven't decided what I'm going to put in there yet. You are awesome. We'll go across the bottom with some brads. And it's going to say, My Kid. This is a page for my stepdaughter's album, and she often refers to her son as My Kid. And I will give her a place there with a Chick Technic Tuesday stamp for some uh, journaling. We'll let her write in whatever she would like. Right, and now I need to line things up a little bit. I'm using the lines on my grid mat so I can attach the photo. And I'm using the large, uh, thin glue dots. These are the 3 8 inch glue dots uh, to apply the photo because over top of all of that paint, I don't think my tape runner would stick really well. For these chalkboard embellishments, I'm using the hot glue gun because I needed a little bit heavier or a little bit better adhesive than just using um, tape runner and it would take a lot of glue dots. So the hot glue gun works out great here. The only thing about the hot glue gun is, of course, wherever you put something is where it goes. So <laughs> to be really sure uh, about the placement. Some of these I am going to use dimensional adhesive. Uh, so I'm creating some layers here and dimensional adhesive holds really well. I use Stamping Up's brand. Um, of course, there's lots of different brands out there. I just like the thickness of theirs, and it sticks really good. Now, this circle embellishment, I'm, try I'm experimenting with something here using twine and wrapping it around uh, this pink circle in between the different little points. And it's a cute embellishment. I didn't quite get it centered, but it's not for this layout. I just left it there as an idea. What I decided to do was to stamp an image and put in the center. I'm stamping on Melon Mambo paper, which matches the ink I was using earlier in painting. I just didn't have a big enough punch there, so get the one and a quarter punch is the right size for that middle. And then I'm going to put a brad in the center. Now one last thing before I uh, finish up the page is I feel like the color needs to go all the way onto the edge. So I'm going to add a little bit of mist around the edges, but I only want it to be in a couple of corners. I don't want it to go everywhere. I don't want it to end up on my journaling or on top of my embellishments or anything. I just want it to be on the corner. This would have been better done before I glued everything down. Uh, but since I haven't, I'm just going to cover a lot of the layout with some scrap paper so when I drop the mist on there it will go just on those corners. Then I'll take this over to my misting box and do the little droplets and then we have the finished layout with the mist on the corners and of course I got some mist on my hands like I always do. And I'll show you a few close-ups of this it's going to be a sketch for this on my blog, so be sure and check that out. Got a little bit of the adhesive backing there on top of it. It's just a fun way to use some of the chalkboard embellishments, whether you make your own or whether you purchase them. Just putting them on a painted background kind of really makes them pop. So thank you for watching.